talking global economy now with Dr. Ewa, who's the global economic advisor for, for, for MasterCard and also uh, a professor, a lecturer yes. in your home city of yes. Vancouver yes. on this uh, very important uh, subject. Mm -hmm. So let's start off. Are we heading for a second recession, do you think? Um, I don't think so. Um, in fact, uh, historical evidence uh, basically uh, counts very much against a double dip uh, recession. And what we have is a double dip in property prices mm -hmm. in the US. And in fact, I believe that to be a good development because the market, the property market, has not been able to clear in the US. And given that it's the epic center of the, the, the financial crisis, it has to clear before we can really talk about a genuine sustainable recovery. Mm -hmm. And I think that's happening now. We're literally now hitting bottom. And from your perspective of uh, being a global economic advisor, rather than perhaps from the aspect of MasterCard, do you think the banks, the governments, took the right approach over the past two or three years to make a correction, get things back on course? Well, I think they play an absolutely critical role in averting a repeat of the Great Depression 1930s style. There's no question in my mind, had they not acted mm. in the way that they did, uh, we would be literally in the Great Depression. And recall, per capita income in the Great Depression in the 1930s declined for 10 years. Uh, it's, it's a much, much more severe situation than what we have experienced. So what do you think is the situation? I mean, there's a bit of an imbalance, isn't there? If we start looking at certain sectors of the world and mm. also different markets, uh, which are static, others which are been growing phenomenally, yes. like China and India, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. have they reached a peak? Are they going to be sort of slowing down in their development uh, and growth? I, I have uh, no question in my mind that uh, the emerging markets are slowing down, uh, simply because of rising inflation. Uh, that, in turn, has necessitated monetary policy to mm. begin to tighten. Uh, in, in fact, I think monetary policy is a bit behind the curve. So I expect to see more interest rate hikes uh, in the emerging markets uh, before the end of this year. Yeah. Uh, that would uh, um, in turn slow down their growth. But the growth will not collapse. Uh, we're talking about, for the, in the case of China, growth will likely slow down to about the 8% uh, uh, real GDP terms. Uh, India around the same. Uh, so these are still very good growth. In fact, for the, for in the case of China, I would argue that's where China should be. Mm, okay. uh, anything above that is just not sustainable. Mm. And if we take it to Europe, the euro, I mean, what we're looking at, sort of heading towards 3% uh, inflation, uh, well, almost, you know, not well, far well, off. But in, in the eurozone, though, what we're going to have is that we, we really shouldn't talk about the average in the eurozone anymore yeah. because we have a very divergent situation between the two extremes. Yeah, take two Gs, uh, yeah, Greece and Germany, I precisely. suppose. Precisely. So I think uh, Germany is now at risk of rising inflation, and Greece is no doubt stuck in deflation. In fact, the deflation is the worst kind, meaning real decline in wages and domestic consumption. Mm -hmm. And this is really a direct consequence of the, uh, the austerity measures and, and so on. So when you take the Eurozone as a whole, and you've got one exchange rate for the Euro mm -hmm. right across the various right. countries and yes. a huge disparity. Yes. Press what you're saying, it doesn't make sense? Well, it does saying? not make sense. In fact, the, the, the single currency is now perhaps the single most difficult obstacle for the recovery of the mm -hmm. Eurozone. So the, the Eurozone crisis, I think, runs much deeper than just the, the level of debt uh, uh, for the, the, the crisis mm -hmm. countries. But there's some structural issues involved. So, yeah, you mentioned debt there. Then mm -hmm. on a personal basis, personal debt, mm -hmm. um, in America, I mean, that's reducing, isn't it? Because yes, yes. Uh, people they, want to clear their debts. Yes, they're paying down their debt, yes. But then the impact is they haven't got cash uh, for spending. They, and, not, uh, at least retail. not as much yeah. to spend. You, you see, what is really interesting in the global economy today is that the corporate sector is literally drowning in cash, the non-financial corporate sector. Okay. Okay. But precisely because the household sector is so weak, they're not investing. You know, if collectively, the non-financial corporate sector of the world yep. open their wallet, the recovery will go into basically, you know, Mark III, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, speed, speed wise, you okay, know. All right. But because the household sector is so weak, the worry is that is demand's gonna be there in the future. Yeah. So business investment become a lot more cautious. And that's the conundrum that we face with. Okay, so to finish off, what do you think will be the, the root of the global economy over the next, uh, we can't go too far, can we say next mm. two to three years? Yeah, I think recovery uh, will stay on track. 
uh, there'd be bumps along the way. Emerging market was, by and large, continue to, to, to grow, but they're not going to see the repeat of the 2009-2010 yeah. type of performance. Okay. Um, uh, the U.S. E economy will basically, at a subpar uh, level of growth of, say, between 1.5% to 2 2.5% per year uh, uh, in the next few years. Uh, so not a double dip yeah. recession, yeah. Uh, but not exactly a robust recovery either. So we're going to be muddling through, as it were. Okay, yeah. muddling through. That's the, yes. the phrase here. Thanks very much for joining us on ameinfo.com.